Check it. Do we have a date for next month? Uh, no, not yet. I was thinking March 10th, but the few guys. That looks fine. I have a couple of hearings already. Let's calendar that while we have it. Um, and again, well, just in terms of housekeeping business, I'd like to go ahead and make a motion to approve our minutes from our last hearing. Can I get a second, second on that? Second, Bob Reen. Thank you, Bob. All in favor? Bob? Bob Reen, aye. And Rinucci, aye. And myself, Jennifer Platt, aye. All right, so minutes done. And Kathy, I may not see because we have um, with that on the screen. I can't see all the participants, which is fine, but. You want um, me to take, stop sharing? No, that's, that's fine. I just want you to let me know when we have. I think all the applicants are here. Um, but I was waiting for our last board member. Did, did you we hear from you and Bob? Is Frank coming? I don't know. I haven't heard from him. All right. Well, given where we are, let's go ahead, let's go ahead and open the public hearing. Uh, the first hearing we have is for 46 Abbott Road. The virtual public hearing will be held on Thursday, February 10th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Joanna Reck, representing the homeowner Thomas W. Goddard, Jr., 46 Abbott Road, North Reading, MA, Map 15, Parcel 25, for a variance to construct a 30 by 23 addition for the setback requirements of the dimensional and density regulations of the North Reading zoning bylaws. And we have, um, Kathy, if you want to go ahead and, and move that down to the site plan, so that's up. Oh, okay. Do you want me to give a little introduction of the project? I would love you to, Ms. Reck. All right, so I'm Joanna Reck. Um, I am the architect on um, this project, and I believe the clients are here as well, or the homeowners are here. Um, so what we have is an existing non-conforming lot, um, which is, um, pretty funky. It's very, very long and very, very narrow, um, as a lot of the other houses in this neighborhood are. Um, and so the house is existing non-conforming. Um, and, you know, if we were to comply with the setbacks, we've got probably about 250 square feet on this lot that's actually buildable by right. Um, so what we're proposing to do is add a um, 30 by 22 garage um, by extending the existing sides of the house as they are um, to the lot. Um, so we're not sort of going out further than the existing house, um, but just by the nature of the lot, it's going to be an existing, or it's gonna be a non-conforming addition. Um, and we looked at sort of going up over the existing house, um, but it just became budget uh, restrictive. It was just too much money. Um, this, the house is a whole bunch of little houses that have just been added onto over the years. It's a, it's a cottage really. Um, so the construction is pretty funky um, and it would just take a lot more than we want to put into uh, to get the space out. So we're doing a garage with a master suite above and another bedroom as we're losing a bedroom to get the connector piece. Um, and there's just not really any other place to put more square footage on this lot. And then um, it also looks like there's a little bit of an addition on the, must be the westerly side or easter on the side, if that's. Right, so we're, so the front door, um, it's a really funky house. So you're kind of coming up on the side of the house. Mm -hmm. So bedrooms are, um, if you're looking at this diagram, the bedrooms are on the left-hand side. Um, and the front door is sort of where in the center um, of this house. So you kind of 
when you drive up, you don't see the front door. Um, so again, we're trying to you know save a little bit of money and not redo the whole inside. Um, so what we've done is made a covered porch on the right hand side, or so the lower side, um, with some stairs to sort of try to make this sort of an entry that as you're coming up to the garage that we'll do a walkway or something so that we're trying to lead people to the front door, not be faced with this garage door. Fair enough. And I think that there was existing, some there's an existing um, little portico um, there. So we're just, we're coming out the same amount. We're just making it a little longer. And there were some elevations included in your package. If um, mm -hmm. I have them, do you want me to share my screen? Sure. Yeah. Okay, um, so these are the floor plans. And so here's this covered porch right now, the front door. Can you guys see my cursor? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. so right now the front, the front door is walking into this family room. So we're taking over a bedroom and making a mudroom that connects the garage to the rest of the house. And we're, we're moving the covered porch down. There is a covered um, porch here, right? A little one right here. Now we're just shifting it down. Um, and the elevations. So this is now what you see. Um, so this is now what you're seeing as um, you're coming in. So we're not going any wider. I did want to sort of have the covered porch be obvious. This is a farther back, but I wanted the covered porch to be obvious so that this becomes sort of the front door entry so that it's not all garage, um, which looks like this on the right hand side as you're coming up. Um, and I've kept the, even because the house is just a one story, I've kept the roof low with this and done a shed dormer so that it sort of hopefully reads still as a, as a it's not a, like a colonial box full two story with a roof on top of it. I tried to keep the ceiling heights low so it sort of ties in with the neighborhood and also with the house. That's uh, appreciated, absolutely. Yeah. And let me know if you have any questions. So we're, we got a kind of funky lot. It's kind of, it's, it, it's this side of the house over here. Uh, so the left side of the house is if you're approaching the house is really, it's, it goes up, it's a, kind of a steep slope here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then, um, so this is sort of our only little flat area to work with. Yeah, let me uh, open it up to the board to see if anyone has questions. So the existing there's, there's the house, excuse, uh, this is Bob. So the existing um, house is, is it more or less a ranch or is there a lower a ranch. base? Okay. There's a basement so to it, but it's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, can you guys see the photo? See the what? Do you see a photo on my screen? No. Um, we still see the the elevation, oh, yeah. the drawings. All right. Let me just do something. Just share. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is what the driveway um, and the house looks like now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're going to be, I get it. We're adding the garage. We're adding a level above yeah. it. Yeah. We're, we're and we talked that. about doing, we talked about doing um, extra bedrooms, sort of instead of doing a garage and adding bedrooms, but it's just impossible to get from here to there. Um, basically, we're just moving, you know, we're just sort of adding bedrooms where we don't need them and it's harder to get into the house. It's just an awkward, really tough, um, tough lot awkward situation. It is long and narrow. It, Very. And, yeah. and you have a slope to deal with. So yeah. as you look at this photo now, just mm -hmm. out of, just for aesthetics, just curious, because um, if you look at these tree lines that are uh, on the upper and on the effectively towards the rear and that just past that shed, I mean, how, where the, where the driveway starts to slope up, you're talking about building out to where, where the slope, it, where the, where yeah, the driveway gonna, is level right currently, yeah. right? Uh, I don't know what and, 
Yeah, I mean, so I we're just going to basically previously. come out here, right. like, pardon my okay. awful sketch, but yeah, <laughs> so we're going to we're going to dig into the hill here. Um, right now, the grade goes right down. I mean, you know, the shingles are almost buried. So as we're doing this, we'll probably um, trench out a little bit and make this a better uh, water runoff condition. So water so can you, run down around it. That was the question I was going at. So mm -hmm. in terms of the, the topographical adjustments that you're going to need in order to put a flat foundation, a, a flat um, level foundation in, yep. uh, is it? Is there um, any um, topography um, designs that, or is there any report, or is it is the new construction? No, I mean, so what, what I think we'll do, I guess what I'm talking about more is fixing what's there. Um, but what we're going to do for the garage is obviously we'll step the foundation. So this side of the foundation will be a retaining wall um, that the grade will butt into. Um, so we're not going to mess with this grade at all. Um, we're just going to lose this retaining wall and just move it. You know, this, this will be here, but as we're doing this, I think we need to sort of fix, um, the existing what's there. So just right now, there's just sort of a little, uh, um, naturally made know, slope. gravel piece. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that's just how the water runs right yeah. now. Yeah. There's so we're not no going to, we're not going to do any kind of serious grading whatsoever we're just going to step the foundation so that the existing grade works with our new addition because obviously i'm just curious if there's going to be a, uh, a change in the water run towards those yep. lower properties on abbott right. not significantly by any stretch and we have quite a lot um per i think that was our um we're in the uh, aquifer district and we're we're well within our we have actually a lot of land it's just in a weird spot so we are impervious um is is okay and on your site plan does it show where um where the aquifer district where the overlay is i didn't i don't see it I think it only exists. The only note of it is, I think, within the <laughs> materials for the proposed addition um, drawing on that we have. I think I saw calculations on it showing that it was well under. Yeah. So I have the GIS map here. Um, hopefully, I just shared it. Yes, so our yep so our um getting better at this um our lot is right here so you can see how funky all these guys are but this i think this is uh, maybe this doesn't show the aquifer district but it was sort of like this area joanna you should be able to get onto the layers and put the uh this the is just a, this is just a screenshot of it unfortunately oh, okay. yeah Kathy, can you, do you have access? Can you show where the? Um, yes, hold on. That would be great. great. Um, Where's the septic on this? It's in the backyard. Yeah, so, and you're not, nothing's they happening should. in the back, it's all in the front. Exactly, which is another reason why this is, why we chose this location for, for an addition, because it really is the only place for it to go. There's a lot right here. Am I unmuted? I'm sorry. There's a lot right here. Okay. Yep. And then the, in terms of the layering, oh, okay, so. So this is one floodplain, another floodplain, and this might be aquifer out here. Okay. And it, you can see um, where the little house is, not the, the house is sort of in the middle and all the addition is going in front towards the street. Okay. 
All right, so we're out of, part of the lot. So we're out of the overlay area. Um, and where was it? Do, 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 do. Building height, building coverage, open space. We're gonna, you're gonna be at, per the drawing, 5% lot coverage. So you're well under. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Then any uh, questions or comments on this? No, I don't have any questions. Um, so Bob, are you, oh, like, no, uh, um, no, just uh, we did have one letter from the butter who I believe is the butter to was it 40? They might have been so to the left, but is it two to the left or one? Yeah. Yeah. So we had a um, an email sent in from Jennifer and Brian Reedy at Forty Abbott Road, who indicate that they couldn't attend the meeting, but they are in support of the of the addition. Is but just looking at the, the the map we had out a second ago, 40 Abbott, is that a direct abutter or is that two over? I think it's um, two over. Megan? Two. Yeah, that's two over. I think one over said she tried to send something, but she wasn't sure if it went through. Um, 42 tried to send something, but I don't know. Anita Castellano. We didn't get that. We did get something from the Reedies who are in support. And you see it right here. Okay. This okay. is 40. So that's 40. All right. And, and they're over here. Got it. Um, do we have anyone else at the public hearing who wants to comment on this? We want someone here. Danica Reed, I don't know. Danica Reed, do we know which hearing she is here for? No. Danica, if you can hear us, and you're here for this hearing. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is, this is Glenn Reed. I live on uh, Sydney Street. And I was just checking in to see what the what the addition was about. It, it sounds great to me. It sounds fine. All right. We'd love to hear that. And I think that is all oh, that's that's the world of our attendees on this hearing. Um, what was what was that gentleman's name? Do we know? Read. Okay. Love to get that from the uh, recording. Unless, uh, unless they would like to tell you again and their address, they said they were on center or central. All right, that being said, um, I agree you have a, a tricky lot to work with and um, I am, it looks like this is a thoughtful addition to the property. I like how um, you you are able to kind of keep with the with the, the the frame, the sort of the scope of the building, and in, in terms of the roof line, that looks like a very a nice addition to that property. Um, so I would I think that I would be in support of this. Oh, da, 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 da. I have no other questions. If, unless there's no other questions from the board, I'd like to close the hearing and then we can make a motion on this. Back in to close the, the hearing. I will, um, I'm not sure if you seconded or just made that motion, but but I will, I'll do the other one, <laughs> whatever it was <laughs> to make. I will second that if you made that motion. All right, and. I believe 
boy, that's a, that's a, that's a tight fit. So I would like to make a motion to propose, uh, to grant a variance from, what's our, what are our requirements? We need 25 on the side. Yep, side. on both sides. So you'll need 11 feet from the, where's, this is upside down. So from the westerly sideline and we go over here, we need, 11 feet from the easterly sideline. Is that right? Sounds right. Um, to build a two-story addition in accordance with the plans that were submitted by the applicant. Do I have a second on that? Uh, Bob Green, second. Beautiful. Is 11 gonna be enough, Jen? Yeah, it should, should be. I mean, if the um up where the addition meets the house it's only 10. oh here you go i was looking at the the at the distance closest to the road and you're right so thanks kathy good call going back here by the where the porch is right. you're going to yep. need 14 and that's the west side How's that look on numbers? 14 on west, 10 on east. We need more anywhere. Actually, this close, no, you're tighter on that. The I keep looking out at the, the corner closest to the street. Right. So on the, the upper, um, so on the west side, the existing is 11.7. We're growing it to 14.2. And then on the other side, the existing is 16.9, but then we're we're doing a five foot. So that would be like 11, that's that 11.5. So it looks like he's doing the 10.5. We have a, we've just projected out a little bit of over the second floor. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the 10.5 that we're just projecting on the second floor to get a little bit more room for a tub. Okay, so. So should the, the grant of the motion um, detail the from the shortest po point uh, and, and, and allow for a larger or vice versa. Yes, so it needs 15 on the east and 14 on the west. That sounds right. Around. Well, the, the north-south arrow is going, north is actually the bottom of the page. The right oh gosh, right. I'm, I'm backwards then too, sorry about that. <laughs> I was thinking North was up. Yeah, I How many zoning board West members are needed to screw it up? All of them. Should we survey? All right. So I, I think we have that now. And just double checking here this plan. So if you have 14 on the West. 15, which is on the east, yep. even though they're, because it's upside down, um, that should do it. Do we have a second? Oh, did we no. vote already? So no, we haven't. All right, so. We're, we're revising the proposed grant. How do we feel about that motion now, folks? Do we get a second? Yeah, I'll second. All, right. All in favor. Bob Rain, aye. Vin Raguchi, aye. Jennifer Platt, aye. All right. Congratulations. There's a 20 day appeal period. After that, you can pick up your stamp variants. Are people picking these up now, Kathy, or do we mail them out with the COVID situation? So I mail out the um, copy of the decision and I have to come into the town clerk to get a certified copy after the 20 days. Okay. And they so have to record to... that at the registry. Yeah. We, we have to record that or it gets recorded? You need the to The owner or whoever has to record it. Okay, good job. Got it. Thank you for your time, guys. Yeah. Absolutely. Good, good, luck. good night. Good luck good night. and enjoy your new Thank edition. You. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.
All right, Bob, do you want to read this second one in? Sure. Give me a second. Uh, regarding a continued virtual hearing to be held on February 10th, today, uh, 2022, petition of Jose G. Sa for a special permit to run a construction landscaping business located at 340 Main Street, North Reading, Mass, Map 12, Parcel 53. Thank you, and I believe we have Mr. Pinta here today. I was very pleased to see last time I drove by that you've made a miraculous thing happen by getting rid of all so many old vehicles that have been parked there. So thank you yes. very much for taking uh, care you're of You're welcome. Good evening to you all. Um, yeah, just to update you, um, the last few times I've been reporting about what's been going on with the uh, eviction of I think it was JNR um, landscaping that was there that was creating the problems. So we do have uh, possession. Um, Mr. Sar has taken possession back. The reason that stuff is gone is the tenant got rid of some of his equipment um, and Mr. Sar had to actually unfortunately pay the dumpster company that the prior tenant was renting the dumpster uh, and he hadn't paid, of course, and we had to work out an arrangement to get the dumpster and all the debris off the site. So um, it, it unfortunately, because of COVID took a lot longer than I think it normally would have, but we're at least at the point now where I think the property looks decent. And Mr. Saw has also um, done things, started his repair work. He's done things like replace the roof, repaired some siding, um, so I think the building looks a lot better too. Um, I'm a little bit confused. I, I think what's, uh, that's I'm just reporting to you, but what I think is before you people tonight is my client wants to, uh, he's trying to get a special permit so that he can put, store some of his own um, equipment behind the property. Um, I haven't, been involved in that part. I was really involved in the eviction and I really wanted to report back to you as a result of that. But I know um, he wants to be heard and I'll help out where I can. And if there's more information that's needed subsequent to this hearing, I'll help him get you what you need so that he can store the equipment that he wants there. But um, Joe, uh, if you could uh, explain to the board um, exactly what it is uh, that you need the special permit for, what you want to store there, where you're going to store it, and how? Yes, of course, yeah. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, so uh, what do we need, uh, basically, there is just a few spots behind the building for one pickup truck or two, two pickup trucks and uh, one, one small mini excavator and one small bobcat and one trailer. So that's uh, basic our uh, uh, tools in there. And what we are planning to do is we are planning to build a, a private fence. So uh, the, the, uh, that way it won't create an eyesore so people won't see it from the outside. That's what I'm planning to do, do more, more cleanup around. Um, and uh, I actually, ask uh, Kathy if I was going to be able to, if I can, like uh, on the side of the property, if I can put a new kind of gravel in there so it would cover all the, all, you know, all the mud that we actually have there. Because as of now, we're spending a lot of money trying to fix the property make it look better, you know, landscape wise too, you know, cutting the trees on the sidewalk and do a little clean up there and fix the pavement so we can get a better rental there. And uh, I'm trying to get a better people over there now. And that's what uh, basically we are trying to do now. So, um, and I've heard from the, from my, building inspector that you had been, I thought, planning to put a, a repair shop back in 
auto repair shop back at the premises? Yes, right. Um, I got a potential uh, tenant and uh, I actually uh, gave uh, Jerry's number so he could call and he has a shop nearby. It's, it's Wilmington, but it's, it's very close by. Actually, I went to the shop last week and it, it, it looks very nice. Looks very clean, some expensive cars over there, like a BMW, Mercedes. So he had, a, you know, he's very nice and clean. So he's, he's kind of interested in uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, on renting that, that, the, the, the whole building actually. So it, it would make it easier. So I don't have to deal with like a multiple tenants. So just one tenant there. So I think it'll be nice for us. Just so you know, this tenant is, is called uh, Euro's Car Center, and they're located right now in Wilmington. Um, and I've looked at some pictures online, and it looks like a pretty good operation that they have there. My understanding is their lease is coming up, uh, expiring in the Wilmington location, and that's why he's looking to potentially move into Joe's space. Good, good to know. The um, and we'd be happy to hear about that when when the the time is right for that. Um, and I'm going to take a look at the just looking at our bylaws here. I think the the issue with storage of the equipment is that it's not going to be permitted. But before I say that, I know we've got um our building inspectors here, and it'll give me a. a minute to take a look back at our zoning bylaws, uh, but he may be able to just apply to that. Uh, and I think we've run into this before on this in this stretch. Automotive repair can be allowed by special permit. Well, it may. It is definitely not an, an allowed use. It, it's not listed. If it's not listed, it's considered prohibited. Um, landscaping would be something different. Could you could have landscaping, um, but that would be once again by special permit. And I think that something that we've been struggling with and uh, trying to um, clean up as we go is the difference between a retail business that would be a landscaping business and as part of their business, they would have um, some of their vehicles parked there versus um, just simply parking, which is what we're really trying to, and our, our building inspector has been working to try to um, work towards removing those from um, businesses along Main Street because it's, it's not permitted and for somehow it just seemed to blossom over over the years. So Jerry, is that um... Have you ever encountered a situation where it wasn't a garage or enclosed parking? If it's not open and obvious, is that, is that addressed by the parking restriction? Yeah, you lost me with that question. If you could. So, were you talking about putting up a fence to all but hide the? parking of the, um, I think a bobcat and a truck, but if it was yeah. an enclosed That's structure, like a garage that looked no different than any other residential garage, while it's still housing and parking vehicles. Oh, I got you. Is that I got you. The way of the, you know. So if it's I, in the bays, is that the, the point? Like if- Yeah, he, yeah he's he, talking about putting those in the bays, but um, it would, it, it's still considered construction. Um, it's a construction vehicle. Um, sure. and, I'm just 
and he's putting in a he's putting in heavy equipment, correct? Because you'd have a skid steer, or you'd have a backhoe, a small backhoe. What was that? Yeah, it is. A, uh, it is a small mini excavator. Yeah, so you'd have a mini excavator there. So, and uh, heavy construction vehicles just are not. They are prohibited. Mm. I didn't know that. Yeah, landscaping is allowed. So that's only by special permit. Yeah, but those uh, those equipment, Jerry, we also using those um, the, 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 like a landscape business too. That is correct. That yeah. is absolutely correct. But that that is not up to me to decide. That's up to the zoning board of appeals. Uh huh. All right. Okay, because it be because it is uh, it is part of a business. Totally agree for the landscaping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, besides that, uh, we don't keep it there all the time. Like, like uh, as of now, I've been out there. I don't. I I always keep my my equipment on the job site. And uh, uh, for, for example, I have been parking there for the last eight months. So it's it's kind of it. It's kind of never there, so it might be there for a couple of days, then I take it out again. So it, it, it is not really parking there all the time. That's my point too. To be honest with you, I've never seen it. And I go by there almost every day. Got it, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so that's that's why we're flying for this, because when we go, uh, like uh, I finish one job and I, I move it, to the other job, then maybe I'll be there one day only. Then I I just move it out again. So th so that way I don't need to uh, buy another property just for, for this purpose. So because I I can do that now, it is very hard. So I would um, the fact that it hasn't triggered a, a issue with Mr. Noel is great. I think that's very positive. Um, I'm not, and maybe it's a, um, a way of sort of phrasing this, that if this is really for the business, but if this is going to be the, the home for your landscaping business and there's some trucks that are, or equipment that's associated with it, um, mm -hmm. then, you know that it's definitely going to impact what up, uh, you know, something else that's anything else at the property. So if you're thinking about this property as being a um, auto repair facility, which again can be allowed by special permit, I don't think we want to be um, allowing the landscape. I mean, it, it's sort of allowing a landscaping business there in part, I mean, I, I think that was the issue with this site before is that it started getting divvied up and having net multiple users on one site, which really overburdened the property. Yeah, right. Uh, would... Yes, when I first bought the, this property, it, it, they had like uh, another landscape guy over there. He, I believe he, uh, he had a permit, right? Mike landscaping? No, nobody else had a did. permit. It, it, there was a permit issued, but it was issued to the to that person only, to to the individual. Um, whoever was there was there, um, basically illegally at one point in time. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Because when I first rented out, I I was I first rented on 2014 I I believe so and by that time it had multiple uh, people over there like uh, one was a uh, I believe was a uh, boats I saw a lot of boats over there then was a lot of was a sweeping company was uh, there as well so then I. I was like renting for like uh, two years almost. So I, I was under the, the assumption that I could have those in there, you know? That's my point. It's, so the heavy construction equipment and rental 
is prohibited. Um, it might be helpful if um, you could, you or your attorney could provide us a plan of, of how you're, of what you're proposing. I, I, I think though we're, we're just really at a impasse with, if it's just storage of your equipment, that's not gonna be allowed. Um, if there's some business that's going to have some vehicles as part of the business, mm -hmm. that can be allowed, but we'd wanna see plans on where they're located on the property, what sort of landscaping is being proposed to screen it from the street. I mean, you've done such a great job of cleaning this up and we want, I mean, you've done a lot of hard work. We want to work with you and make sure that you can use your property now that you've, you've gotten rid of the, the non-conforming portions of it. Um, so I think it, it would be very helpful if you could come in, um, give us something, uh, you know, showing a plan of the premises, where things are going so we can understand how it would be used and what it would look like. I think I can do that. Um, what if I, uh, just an idea, what if I establish my office on the, in the back of the building? Mm -hmm. There is a little office over there, uh, which I, it's always empty and I can establish my office over there, then I can do as a, my, my landscape business. Mm -hmm. would, uh, would that be possible? I think that would be possible. I, would, I definitely would wanna see where any equipment that's yes. involved in the landscaping business would be stored. I mean, again, you are the first thing people see coming into North Reading from the North, so how this looks to someone coming by is very important. Mm -hmm. um, and I wouldn't, you know, some fencing might be appropriate, but fencing along the roadway just to- yeah, That's on my plan, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fences on my plan, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can definitely do like a drawing, mm -hmm. uh, a better drawing and showing where everything goes, how I how, how, how we start the fence and the uh, uh, gate, then we, I, I'm pretty sure it will look a lot better. Fantastic. Can I just, can I just ask, I'm sorry, can I just ask a quick question uh, to the board is, does it make a difference to the board if he has an actual office in the structure versus if he's renting the whole structure out? to this uh, car repair place and has no office on site and just the equipment, landscaping equipment there. Does that make a difference at all to the board? And the reason I asked before you answer is because obviously he has control over either renting out the whole facility to potentially the car repair place or saving a spot in there so he can actually put an office in there. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I think it does matter because the, the issue is, I mean, it's just and it's sort of an anomaly of the bylaws where you can have a business operating there, but you can't just store vehicles. Right. And so if he just wants to park the vehicles there, the equipment at the end of the workday, that's not allowed. But if it's okay. part of his, you know, his business, then there's a way to make that happen under our, our oversight and our review. Um, I think one of the things that I would be looking at going forward is you know, how many vehicles, what vehicles, it would be a, a, um, a specific grant. So it right. doesn't become a, you know, just a parking lot of old vehicles like it had been before. Right. Gotcha. And, the, and the other point to keep in mind here is that um, with the proposal and the specificity, it lends itself to, I mean, you do have neighbors. You do have people that are going to be impacted by whatever is characterized as the business that's ongoing there. So for that purpose, um, uh, uh, being forthright and being um, and being uh, clear as to the intended use of that property is 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 paramount to that, if not required under law, especially by us. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I, I would recommend that we 
give a grant a continuance or that you request a continuance and then we grant it to we, move we would like a, we would like a continuance yes please um, absolutely no and and i again i do appreciate that you are working very hard to reestablish this property get got site control now let's we want to work with you to help yep. appreciate you acknowledging that one one last quick question the the sort of plans that you're asking Joe to put together. Um, do these have to be, you know, architectural or landscaping design plans? Or are you okay? You know, I don't think that's necessary here, but are you okay with, uh, you know, Joe and I putting something together that answers your questions about where and what's going to be there? I would be open to more informal plans as long as there are yeah you know, have, are some, have some detail and some clarity so we can see what you're doing, but no, I don't, okay. you don't need to run out and go um, pay for formal plans, which thank you have to work with you on that. If there okay. was, if there was going to be an addition or a change to the physical structures, um, then we would require plans. No, other than the fence Joe's talking about. No. Okay. Perfect. And I think that the, Continuance that we were looking at, I think we just said March 10th. Is that right, Kathy? Yes, that was the date I was looking at. All right, March 10th work for the board and for you. Um, that's Sean. okay for me, Joe, is that okay for you? Yes, yes, sure, yes. Yeah. And Please, if, you uh, guys, if you need more time, just uh, connect with Kathy and she can bounce, bump that. Yes, okay. Okay. okay, okay, thank you all. Have a good night. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, and okay. just to keep it formal for us, I'm gonna just uh, would like us to vote on that. If we need to vote on that, if we well, let's just vote on it so we have it. I think we have to make a date certain. Yeah. All right. We I am making a motion to accept the request for a continuance to March 10th. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Then we're going to aye. Beautiful, Jennifer Platt. Aye. Thank you. All right, guys. Um, Thank you. Good to Thank see you me. all. You um, as well. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. I'm going to wish everyone well and close this hearing. <laughs> I need to run as well. So good to see you. And uh, we'll talk to you next month, if not sooner. Good night. Good night, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Jerry. Thank Thanks. <laughs>